I'm Kimberly Turner from cookingwithkimberly.com and tonight I'm going to show you how to bake a salami, zucchini, and tomato slice gluten-free pizza. Now I'm making this pizza with Roberto's Pizzerias. This is from Roberto's Pizza Passion in St. Catharines, Ontario. They're located at 22 Facer Street. Now they have these really fantastic gluten-free pizza crusts already made for you, frozen. And you can get it at the store or they can also probably deliver them to you as well when you order a pizza. But they're really great to have in your freezer for such a time as this. You don't actually have to make the pizza crust and it's gluten free. The best thing about it is that you can use it right out of the freezer. You're actually going to um, top your pizza, get it all ready on the frozen crust and throw it in frozen. Also, they send you home or send you with one of these beautiful trays so you can just easily do it like that. Now if you're wondering what's in here, it's all natural stuff. Things that you can actually pronounce and can read. Um, there is extra virgin olive oil, there is um, raw sugar, sea salt, yeast, rice flour, and filtered water. And that's it. So that's what it looks like. You can check them out at robertospizzapassion.com for more information. Now I'm going to get this out of here. And I've already started preheating my oven. It's almost there. You're going to preheat it on a really high heat of 550 degrees. Now, their typical uh, pizza crust, the regular pizza crust and the whole wheat one that you can get at Roberto's, you will also bake that at 550, but you're going to bake it for about 15 minutes. Now, these guys, I'm going to go probably 10 to 15 with the gluten-free crust. It just cooks up a little bit different. The first thing okay. I'm going to do is I'm actually going to olive oil the top and the bottom, the bottom so that it doesn't stick and the top for a little bit more extra um, flavor. Really, the thing that takes the most time to prepare are the actual toppings that you're going to put on here. So I'm going to move that off to the side for a minute, and um, I'm going to slice up my stuff. I'm going to slice up some tomato slices. I love tomato slices. Now you can do them in chunks. Now you don't even have to have tomatoes because you already have sauce, but I'm also going to add the tomato slices. My dad used to love it like that. Oof. And there's my um, oven. It's already preheated, so we're ready to go. So I'm just going to slice them as uniformly as I can, nice and thin using one nice ripe fresh tomato. It's also a great idea to use tomato slices if you don't have a whole lot of sauce left and that's kind of what's going on here tonight. So I figured I would substitute, sort of, with my um, sliced tomatoes. Love that. Okay, so that's all nice and fresh. Next, I have a zucchini. This is actually a pretty large zucchini that I had the other day and I used it for some great pasta but I have half of it left. Now what I like to do is I like to peel um, strips off of it so that it's kind of like a you know a special design when you slice them up. So I'm just going to slice them nice and thinly as well. I think zucchini is an underrated vegetable and we don't use it enough. Now zucchini can tend to get a little bit dry and what I'm going to do to alleviate that problem is just toss it with a little bit of the rest of the olive oil I have here. Altogether I probably use maybe one to two tablespoons. Alright so that's prepared. Now I know everyone loves using pepperoni and that's great, but sometimes you don't have it or sometimes you just want something different. So um, you can go into your meat drawer in your fridge and you could probably find deli meat in there if you buy deli meat, you know. And I've bought some beautiful Genoa salami with beautiful cracked peppercorns inside. And I'm just going to actually cut them into quarters. So they're kind of like little diamonds, like pizza shape. This is about seven pieces, that's what I had. Now feel free to use pepperoni or ham or any other kind of really awesome meat that you'd love to use. Now that's all prepared and I have some cheese already grated up. That's probably, I don't know, two, maybe two and a half cups of cheese. You can use as much as you like. This is not rocket science. You're just gonna eyeball and you're gonna use what you have, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do now is I'm going to top this with some of Roberto's beautiful sauce that he brought me as well. Um, if not, you can use your own sauce, you can use canned sauce, you can buzz up some tomatoes, or whatever you want to do, as long as you get that done. I'm just going to use my brush to make things a little bit easier. I like my sauce to go nearly to the edge because I like my crust to be, you know, decorated too. When you make pizzas, you get to be somewhat of an artist. Now when I make pizza, I like to put a little bit of cheese underneath the toppings and a little bit of cheese on top. Kind of holds everything all together. It's just the way I like it. You can do it either way. You can do it all on the bottom, you can do it all on the top, or you can do a mixture. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use probably about half of this cheese on the bottom. This is just a beautiful mozzarella that I have. You can use other cheeses, whatever you've got in your fridge. You can use cheddar and Swiss and just 
you know, experiment with what you have in your free, free fridge. I was going to use a little bit of feta tonight, but I decided just to, you know, let the salami and these other ingredients do the topping. Okay, now I'm going to put on this salami. I'm just going to scatter them, these little diamonds that I've made. Or you can do a design if you like. Eh, I don't even need it all. I can't even fit anymore if I wanted to. All right, next thing's next. I'm going to put these gorgeous tomato slices around. Oh, I love tomato slices. This smells so good too already. <laughs> so really your limiting factor is how quickly you can decorate your pizza. On go the zucchini. Now, I love freshly cracked black pepper and this is no exception pizza. <laughs> so I'm just gonna crack up some pepper, peppercorns. If you don't have one of these handy dandy mortar and pestles, you ought to get one because they're inexpensive to purchase and you can use them for so many awesome things that make your cooking that much better. I'm not completely grinding it, I'm just leaving it nice and coarsely cracked. All over my pizza. If I don't put it on now, I'll be putting it on later when I eat it, so love that. This is such a simple pizza, but it's gonna be so tasty. I love red chili flakes. I'm gonna add some of those as well. Also, it's something that I like to add at the end. We're just gonna to cut to the chase today. And now I'm going to top it with the rest of my cheese. No big deal. Now if you had some basil, that'd be fantastic. Mine hasn't come up in my garden yet. Well, it has, it's only this big though. I don't wanna wreck it. So this is what's going down tonight. We're having this. You could also put chives. You could add scapes. Scapes are a beautiful addition and they're in season right now. It's um, early summer and it's the part of the, it's before your, the flower blooms on your garlic plant. So as it comes up, it's that beautiful, smooth, curved looking um, stalk that comes out of the ground. Those are fantastic to cook and bake with. It's a pretty healthy pizza all in all. I mean, you have the gluten-free crust, you have tomatoes, you have the zucchini, fantastic, and partly skimmed mozzarella I'm using. That's what it looks like before it's going in. Doesn't it look awesome? <laughs> I can't wait to eat. All right, so this is only gonna take 10 to 12 minutes, depending on how you like it. I want my crust on the outside golden and the cheese bubbly and, and melted, okay? So into the oven it goes. I'm setting my timer for 10 minutes to look at it then. I don't want it to get brown or burnt or anything like that, too brown. So I'm gonna check it at 10. If it needs to go a couple extra minutes, go ahead. Don't forget. The temperature is 550. It's super high, but it's going to work out perfectly. You're going to see. There's my timer. Now that's a lovely pizza, but I'm actually going to let it go maybe another minute. I put it in there 10 minutes, checked it, and I wanted it more. So I put it in for 12, then I put it in for 14. I'm going to go another minute or so just to get it a little bit more brown on the edges and a little bit more uh, brown on the cheese. Okay, that should be done now. Yep, that's perfect. Here we go. That's my beautiful pizza. That's what's up. It's a salami, zucchini, and tomato slice pizza with Roberto's gluten-free crust. It's gonna be fantastic, I can't wait. So I have my handy dandy mezzaluna to cut it. You don't need a mezzaluna. You can use a pizza slicer, you can use a regular knife, whatever. But I like this because it just makes things a little bit easier. It's nice and crunchy, I can feel it, I can hear it. Now these pizza crusts typically give you an eight slice pizza. All right, I'm gonna get me a piece of this. Oh yeah. Gorgeous, right? Look at this pizza, it's gonna be so hot, I'm trying to stall. <laughs> it's super hot, but look how beautiful that pizza is and you did it all by yourself, right? Well, except for the gluten-free crust, but Otherwise, it's by yourself. The, the crust on the bottom is crispy. Mmm. Mmm-hmm. Oh, that's good. That is so, so yummy, I can't even tell you. The crust is super nice today. Now, every day is different. Now, sometimes I cook these crusts and it only takes 10 minutes. Sometimes it takes 12. Today, it took like 15. Whatever, just watch it. It's, um. It's really just a food of feel. You're gonna look at it and see, is it bubbling? Is the cheese melted? Is the crust golden? If it's not, leave it in there for a couple more minutes. But don't leave it in for like five minutes. Just do it like one or two minutes at a time. This is so good, it's so hot though. Mmm. 
Mmm. That's a good piece of pizza. That is mm. really, really tasty. And I love putting the peppercorns on and the chili flakes um, before I bake it because it just it kind of, um, all those flavors marry and everyone gets to taste a little bit of what I like. The oils right? and the pepper and the chili, they kind of come out when you um, heat them up like that. It's fantastic. It's a little bit different than if you added it on after. Okay? This is fabulous. So make sure that you- I can't um, wait to feed my family. <laughs> that was an easy dinner. It only took me about 25 minutes to prepare the whole entire thing. And that's what it looks like. It's fantastic. That's how you bake up a salami, zucchini, and tomato slice pizza with gluten-free crust. And if you don't want to go to all that effort, you can always order a pizza from Roberto's Pizza Passion. They're located at 22 Facer Street in St. Catharines, Ontario. And their phone number is 905-938-5525. You can also check them out online at robertospizzapassion.com. Fantastic. Make sure you ask them if you order a pizza to deliver you some extra crust that you can throw into your freezer. You're going to love them. They're fantastic, okay? Make sure you do that. Make sure you tell them Kimberly sent you over there too, okay? Beautiful stuff. Really, a lot of passion does go into their pizza and their ingredients. Fantastic. So thank you, Roberto. Much appreciated. That's how you do it. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at Cooking with Kim E with a capital E. Like the fan page at Facebook.com slash Cooking with Kimberly. My shows are on iFood.tv slash Cooking with Kimberly and YouTube.com slash Cooking with Kimberly. And my site is CookingWithKimberly.com. That's it. That's all. Be a champion in your kitchen and eat deliciously. Bye.